kind of crazy how I got into Claws to study media production, but in the beginning, I didn't really understand the scope of what I was getting myself into. But my perspective shifted when I got into this class in fall 2022 where I had the opportunity to work as a production assistant for this Christmas movie. Now, being a photographer, I wanted to work with the camera department. And when I did, I was blown away by the gear they were using, the way they communicated and just the energy of the set. I learned small intricacies in their communication, like saying mine when you wanted to confirm that you had a hold of something like a lens. Now, I was only available to be on one of the shoot days, but that experience alone gave me just enough exposure to want to pursue filmmaking further. In spring of 2022, I got the opportunity to work as the director of photography and the camera operator for my first short film. It's called On Hold. I'll make sure to put it in the description. One of the biggest lessons I learned from that production was that things will go wrong, especially with an experience. And for being my first short film, I think it looks pretty good, but there was definitely some hiccups, you could say, that happened along the way. The craziest one happened because of my inexperience. See, this was my first ever time using a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. So I didn't know that the cable that connects to the V-mount battery, there's just a lock that you slide in and it comes off. What I was doing was I was twisting it and I inevitably broke the cable. But fortunately, we had the wall plug to power the camera, but it made us have to adapt to how we were shooting the film. But when it seemed to become a crisis was when we were using the wall plug to the camera and someone unfortunately tripped over it and broke the cable. Now. It's not entirely their fault. I kind of put the cable in a really awkward situation where anybody could trip over it, but it put us in a weird situation where now we don't have another cable to power this camera. And if you don't know, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera uses these really bad Canon PO batteries that can barely last 40 minutes of recording. So those are the only other batteries that we have and we're frantically putting them on rotation on the charger, hoping that we can scrape by in the production with these really bad batteries. But fortunately, my dad knows how to fix a cable like that by soldering the connections if he knows the polarities. And on the other half of the shoot, we were able to use the cables and not have to worry about the power source. So that was a win-win. This whole crazy situation kind of taught me how being adaptable, improvising, maybe having some helpful connections and keeping your head in the game can get you through a lot in filmmaking. Since that project, I've probably worked on maybe around three more productions with this small company called 86 Luck based in Houston, founded by a few other filmmakers around my age. And 86 Luck is an art syndicate with a current focus on making visually striking and compelling short films. I'll make sure to link them in my description. If you like the idea of combining surreal cinematography with 3D animation, I suggest you check out 86 Lux recent production called Down to Earth right up here. Anyways, I've learned three really good lessons from working with 86 Lux. Two about production in general, and one about how I think I want to start pursuing filmmaking and how I think it can apply to other people with a low budget. I'm going to first describe the two lessons I learned about production. But before I get to that, I need to lay out some context. So, on my first production with 86 Luck, which hasn't been released yet, so I can't disclose too much about it, but on one of the shoot days, the headphones for audio either weren't working or we forgot them. I can't really remember that part, but that's besides the point. What was really bad was that part of the lead actor's costume was missing. So we are frantically searching around this set and finally come to the conclusion that if it's not here, it must be at the DP's house. So I had to drive with one of the directors, Kel Bernardo. And in the meantime, the crew had to reorganize the schedule and shift it around so that they can get shots of the lead actor in angles that don't include that part of the missing costume. So as I was driving, we were discussing the whole nature of this first project and how much chaos had just ensued. And Kel described to me how he is stressed about this situation, but he can't project any of that stress onto the rest of the crew, especially with how much pressure the crew is already under. Doing that would only hinder their performance. And as the director, it's his job to maintain a level head and to keep the production together. 
And after hearing this, it made me think about how I should approach a production environment and my life in general. See, in my career, there's very likely going to be a lot of situations I come across that are disastrous, but I can't project any of that stress onto other people because that can only lead to more trouble. Oftentimes, a crew's performance is determined by their mental state, and if I can maintain a positive environment, that can lead to a very productive set. Okay, so before I get to my second lesson, I want to preface that for the rest of this video, I'm just going to be reading through the rest of my script, despite how that may make the rest of the video not so engaging. Um, I still want to touch on all my points, and I'm kind of running out of time to shoot here, so I apologize for that, but here we go. I've been very fortunate to work with a crew like 86 Luck where in our productions along the way, we're just vibing and cracking jokes while still being productive and it's a really fun environment to be involved in. It made me realize that on these productions, you don't have to be so locked in and tense all the time. Enjoy the process and learn. Finally, I'm going to discuss how this year has made me figure out how I want to approach filmmaking and how it can apply to other filmmakers on a low budget. After working on a few lower budget productions, I feel like lighting tends to get overcomplicated. My advice for people just getting into lighting for filmmaking is just invest in maybe one or two lights you can afford. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It could be like a cheap lamp or panel light. Just try exercising your creativity with just those lights when you shoot. If you need another source of light, just use something that's already existing in the environment, like how I'm just using this panel up here on my car and embrace the nature of the location. Now, to have the luxury of doing that, it's good to have interesting locations, but I think that's one of the biggest benefits of having a small and simple kit. It allows you to, it allows people with a low budget to be able to shoot with more mobility and have more location flexibility. If I have a discrete camera, I can shoot in some locations without disrupting the environment. At this point, all I would need is composition and storytelling to make something compelling. I used to get too hung up on gear, wasting hours researching stuff I can't afford, and I believe it's much better to just go out there and experiment with what you have. So this is why I've decided to go for a more minimalist approach to filmmaking. Anyways, I'm Alan, or Illusion, and if you find my style interesting, I have a series called Spontaneous where I go about my life with just my camera and capture things that evoke emotion. Then I try to share it through my creative lens. You can find the first episode up in the cards or in the description. And if you made it to the end of this video, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.